We are now going to make a very simple example of a model for flood risk. Okay. So we're going to consider the area around um, IBM's TJ Watson Institute here. And we're going to consider elevation and the soil water holding capacity. Okay. So let's create a new query. Now for the layers, we're interested in the water holding capacity. And you know, this comes in different depths. So let's just pick uh, 0 to 50 centimeters as well as 50 to 100. So, so we have up to one meter depth. Now for the area, we're going to specify a rectangle around TJ Watson. So you can see Watson down here. So we simply select a rectangle such as this. But we're gonna filter this area we add a filter based on elevation data for the US, okay? So we add a filter. Now we have to choose what value. So basically we want that the oh, aggregation doesn't actually play a role for elevation here, but let's say um, it should be less than 100 meters in altitude, okay? So the idea of course is that um, low areas are more likely to be flooded, okay? So once we've added this filter, simply select next. Um, we use the same interval for the data, okay, so uh, the soil water holding capacity of course doesn't change a lot over time. There's no aggregation needed, therefore we can give this a name. So once we've done this, we can submit this. And while this query is running, let's take a look at a previously paired identical query, which we have here. Now that we click on this, um, you can see here in the map is TJ Watson. But you see now basically um, only areas of elevation less than 100 meters have been selected, okay? If we go to the standard map, you see that not surprisingly, these are areas close to the actual shores of, you know, there's some reservoirs in the area. And you can now see in the water holding capacity, um, you know, different values here, okay? Usually, I guess you would say that areas of low water holding capacity are higher risk for flooding. 